We have Leslie Udwin, who is the filmmaker at the heart of this entire storm, joining us on left, right and center this evening. Leslie, okay, take a deep breath. You've just heard these views from MPs. What is your reaction to members of parliament like Mr. Naidu, as a senior minister, who says this is a conspiracy to defame India? I'm really speechless. I mean, a conspiracy to defame India. Let me be very, very clear. I came to India. My entire crew was Indian. This is a co-production with India. My co-producer, Dibang, is Indian. I love India, and I loved India even more and almost beyond expression when the ordinary men and women of India came out onto the streets to fight for my rights as a woman following this absolutely heinous, horrific gang rape. So I came here with the best of motives in the public interest. I came here to inquire into why men rape, and men rape not just in India, men rape globally. This was not an India-centric inquiry. It happened to be an Indian case, but if this had happened in Turkey, I would have gone to Turkey because I went because of the protests. And I know rape happens elsewhere because I myself have been raped. One in five women globally are raped. And at the end of this documentary, if anyone bothered to be rational enough and responsible enough to look at the documentary, look at the documentary before you make these statements, ladies and gentlemen, please. At the end of my documentary, there is an entire list of global statistics. Am I out to harm the tourism in the UK, where I say that one in three girls between the ages of 13 and 17 have known sexual violence? Am I out to harm the tourism in South Africa, where I say that a rape occurs every 26 seconds? I beseech you, please, stop being hysterical. Stop sidelining this issue. Look at the issue, but you will only be able to assess this documentary and see whether there is offence in the documentary well, if okay. you watch it. Well, now, why did you then you know, look at this particular case? Before I come to everything that's happened in the last 24 hours, what was it about this rape case? Like you said, it happens all over the world. Was it the kind of reactions and the protests that, that followed? That it was 100% the protests. It was not the rape. It was the protests because I felt as a woman sitting on the other side of the world, as it were, that here was India leading the world by example. I've lived a very long time, as you can see, and you know what? In my lifetime, I have never seen a country so impressively standing up for gender inequality, which is a global issue and an issue that the world is ready to address now. I wanted to amplify those voices and to give what I could in gratitude to those ordinary men and women who stood on the streets and withstood that freezing uh, uh, weather in Delhi that December, withstood the water cannons, and I understand why there was a crackdown. There is now, of course, a, a restraining order in place. You have seen the angry reaction of the government of India, the ministry has got into it, the court has said that this film can't be shown, and you wanted this film to be shown in India first before it is broadcast or telecast or shown anywhere else in the world. What is your reaction to that? I'm deeply disappointed, deeply disappointed. Um, I've spent two years of my life making this film out of a sense of pure and genuine commitment. I left two young children for two years with my husband, who, thank God, is a very uh, sensitive, liberal and supportive man who doesn't see gender stereotypes. And when I go off and do work, he looks after the children. But I left them for two years on the hardest, most difficult journey I have ever been through in my life. And to come to the end of that and be told that the very country that I wanted to make the film for as a gift, okay, um, and not be allowed to show it, is deeply disappointing. But more than disappointing, I'm very frightened for what is going to happen next. And can I please explain Why what I mean frightened? by that? Because I came here ready to tell the world how India is changing, is ready for change, has expressed that hope in those protests in an exemplary fashion. And what is going to happen now? 
I hope I'm wrong, but I'm really scared to say I predict the whole world is now going to point fingers at India, which was not the object of the exercise. The for object censoring it. Well, for censoring it, because India is a democracy. And in a democracy, you have free speech. Now, you don't have irresponsible free speech. And believe me, when you see the documentary, if you ever take the trouble to look at the documentary, you will understand there's nothing irresponsible about this documentary. It is highly irresponsible. It is in the public interest. It's a tragedy. You are shooting yourselves in the foot. Why are you doing it? Uh, what has uh, you know, been alleged in terms of the, you know, the permission that was granted for filming this, Leslie, because this is very important. The Home Minister of India today said in the Indian Parliament that jail authorities had sent you a legal notice on the 7th of April 2014 that the permission conditions that you had been given to shoot this film had been violated and that you had to return the unedited footage within 15 days and not to show the film anywhere because it violates the permission conditions. What happened after that? What, did you get this notice? What was your response? Okay, first of all, I have to say with the greatest respect, sir, you are the Home Minister, but please ask your advisers to give you the facts because I actually heard uh, the Home Minister speaking in um, Parliament today and I was really shocked by the inaccuracies. You haven't got the facts, sir. I beg you, get them. What happened was clearly this. In a, about uh, late May or June, I wrote an impassioned plea to the DGTR saying I wanted to make a film, a documentary film, in the public interest. I wanted to understand the mindset of the rapist. That was in 2013? In 2013, correct. Okay. That was um, when you first approached them? It was the first approach. And effectively, I knew I wanted to make a film about, um, you know, with the protests as the pulse of, of the uh, documentary, but I also felt that I wanted to get meaningful answers to the question, why does uh, violent rape happen with such alarming regularity in the world? To get that answer, I knew I would have to go to the source. I would have so to you wrote, ask you rapists. wrote to the DG of the Jail, correct? Who was Vimla Mehra at the time? That's correct. Okay, so I just want to hold up uh, to, to, for everyone. This is the letter that the Home Ministry then issued on the 24th of July 2013, which was the first time they actually gave clear-cut permission. They wrote to Vimla Mehra, who had approached them about Leslie's request and said uh, that they had no objection to the proposal, provided that informed written consent was obtained from each of the convicts that were interviewed. After that, what happened, Leslie? Uh, why did you get a notice from them saying that your uh, conditions had been violated? Because you had been told very clearly that uh, you had to get written consent, which you did. Uh, they also said that nothing should breach the security of the jail. Yes, what happened? That what was, did you violate? That was the second layer of permission. So let's be really clear about this so there's no more misinformation. After the MHA permission letter, I required and got a letter of permission from the jail authorities themselves. Now, that letter of permission, uh, I believe was dated the 22nd of July or so, this correct me 26th. if I'm wrong. This is that 26th letter. of July. 26th of July, okay. signed by Sunil Kumar, the law officer of prisons correct. in Delhi. Now, there was a problem with this letter because it mentioned that the film could not be used for commercial use. It That's was right. correct? It says that. Okay. Last night. So I went to the jail authorities um, through an intermediary, of course, who was constantly with me, who was dealing with the jail authorities on my company's behalf. Um, but we, we went to the jail authorities and said, look, please refer back to the original letter I sent, which stated clearly this was going to be a documentary film. And we really need you to understand that we can't say for no commercial use because the way a documentary film is distributed, this is the reality of the television world, you sell that documentary film for, for a pittance, actually, yeah. I have to say, because mm. documentaries make no money. Yeah. The authorities respond to that? The authorities understood completely, and they then issued the final permission letter, Here dated permission letter. August the... This is the 20th of August 2013, where they have uh, said that uh, 
again uh, once you get written consent of the convicted prisoners you can go ahead uh, that you have been uh, that the MHA is pleased to grant you permission for the same and that the complete unedited raw footage of the shoot in Tihar will be shown to the Delhi prison administration to ensure there is no breach of prison security dated the 20th of August now Leslie there comes the problem because the Indian government says that you did not show the jail authorities that unedited footage I showed the jail authorities the unedited raw footage, every frame of footage that had been shot at Tihar, they constituted a three-man committee over two days. Those two days were the 9th and the 10th of December. And I would hope... 2013. 2013. And I would hope that the prison records will show that my editor Vivek came with a hard drive with uh, between... I don't want to say how many hours, but it was between 13 and possibly 16 hours, 17 hours, of every frame of footage shot at Ihar, the unedited raw footage as the permission requested. It was shown on the 9th and 10th of December 2013. It was shown on the 9th. What was shown on the 9th was all of the GVs, as we call them, the general views of Tihar, and I believe the beginning of the Mukesh interview. The three-man committee, who saw the footage, got a bit bored with looking at so much footage and said, this is too lengthy. Um, sorry, my editor came back the next day, so, but they didn't watch much more the next day. They didn't sit the whole full session the next day. They said, this is too long. We can't sit through these 13 hours or 15 hours, however many it was. Please cut it down for us. I said, with the greatest pleasure I will cut it down for you but you need to understand I can't cut it down now because the editing process when making Did a film any objections when they watched this unedited footage about what uh, the convict was saying or any of the contents editorial editorially no they didn't they didn't have the position to raise editorial uh, objections because the prison letter uh, uh, permission states very clearly that the only objections they could have voiced, might have voiced, were breaches of prison security. It's written there. So why did they give you, then what does the notice of the 7th of April 2014 say? It says the, that you violated the permission conditions and that you cannot show the film. It said so, but it was inaccurate. So my lawyers from Abacus wrote back uh, a, a, a reply to that legal notice um, and uh, the matter seemed to go away. Um, however, I still had not shown them the cut-down version, okay? Um, so out of a sense of complete responsibility, because they had asked for that some months before, they seemed to accept um, my lawyer's rebuttal of their letter, because, for example, in that letter, their legal, legal notice, they said that, I had breached because I had not handed over the footage. Look at the permission letter. Does that say hand over or does that say show? Please, will you tell the Home Minister? It doesn't say hand over. You're it says right. show, am I right? Yeah, yeah. How it will be can... shown to the Delhi Police Administration. It doesn't say it will be handed over. Thank okay. you, because how can a responsible producer, and I've produced give them the tapes. for You're many saying... years, how could I give them the tapes? It would be a breach of intellectual property. So I but would why, never have signed they, I, that What I notice. don't understand is then, you know, if they've seen the unedited footage or much of it, at least on the 9th and 10th of December, why is they send you a letter for five months later saying that you're in violation? What happened in, those, in that intervening time? I am very, very clear that they wanted to retract the permissions. There is no other explanation because I have complied with the permissions in absolutely to the letter. But Leslie, the, you got another letter. You got another letter from the law officer of Delhi prison, Sunil Kumar, and that's dated on the 14th of June, where he has said that he actually has objections to what the convict is saying, uh, that uh, he feels the language that he is using is derogatory, and he goes back to this point about wanting to see the unedited footage. Okay. You replied to that. What happened? Yeah, but I must fill in because there's a very important missing stage. I pursued Mr. Sunil Kumar and... DG Vimla Mera. For weeks, I've got all the emails. I was utterly ignored. I pursued them to say, I promised to show you the cut down version. I have now chosen those bits I want to show, and responsibly, I want to come in and show you the cut down version as I promised I would. They ignored my emails, which was very strange. So finally, and I had come to Delhi for that purpose. 
Finally, I wrote to Mr. Sunil Kumar. I said, Sir, with the greatest respect, I've been asking you for a meeting for two weeks. I leave in two days. If I don't hear back from you within the next day, with a time and an appointment, I will have to assume you don't need to or want to see this cut down footage. He immediately responded and said, come tomorrow, I will have a three man committee. So I went the next day, I went with my lawyer. Mr. Kumar was on his own. There was no other committee member there. And he said, I'm really sorry. Um, the, the, only the chairman of the committee is around, the other two are not around. We had arrived in time for the meeting he'd set up. So he said, uh, please come back tomorrow. I said, sir, you are here. The uh, chairman of the committee you say is around. Can we at least show it to you? Because tomorrow is the day I leave. He said, no, it's not my position. I can't make any such. So he just resisted seeing it. So I said, OK, I can't come tomorrow, but I will send a representative of my company and another one of my lawyers. And that is what happened. And they showed the, the cut down version, which means the prison authorities had both the unedited raw footage first. They chose to watch it up to a certain point and then asked for a cut down version. They were shown the cut down version. But they had objections. That's what I'm saying. On the 14th of June, when they wrote to you last year, they mm. said they had objections to what the convict was saying. They called the language derogatory. They felt uh, that, they, that th th this was a problem. And what did you say to them in response? I said, this goes beyond the scope of the permission letters that we have you because know, the signed permission together. permission was only limited to... Breach of prison secu security. security. Now, Not with editorially respect, what the convict says and doesn't say. Correct. If DG Tihar and or MHA and or Mr. Sunil Kumar, the law officer, had wanted editorial control, I would not have gone ahead with the interviews because I couldn't give editorial control. From whatever letters are here, it's, you know, you're very clear that you had all your legal permissions in place. My question then to you is, Leslie, what next? Because, you know, uh, the government is, has clearly made it clear that it's not going to let this film or this documentary be shown here. I don't know how this is going to play out in the higher courts, but are you going to fight it? Is this something you've had a chance to think about? It's not something I've had a chance to think about in any pragmatic sense in terms of what will I do next? Will I just give up on my deep desire to have this film shown in India because it was made, you know, for as, for as my gift to India and obviously the world comes into it, but it was a very personal thing because of the protesters, okay? Um, but what I can tell you is what I have thought about a great deal and has kept me awake last night. Um, I'm, I'm in deep pain because this is going to backfire. And I beg you, in fact, Prime Minister Modi, I appeal to you, please, I appeal to you. You and I met at a festival in Gujarat when you were the chief minister there and my film West is West opened that festival. And we met then. I appeal to you, Prime Minister, do not allow this to get out of hand because it is getting out of hand. Countries around the world will very soon be saying, how dare India ban a, a documentary that is in the public interest. I urge you to see the film as soon as possible. I urge the Home Secretary to see this, the film. And I urge everyone, including the Times Group, who is on some rabid campaign, I know not why, please see the film but and then Leslie, talk about it. You know, there are, uh, before we wrap this up, you know, there are people, I mean, even friends of mine, okay, uh, who are uncomfortable with the idea of this film, uh, who are uncomfortable with uh, a, a, what they feel is a platform uh, for this convict, okay? And they feel that there are genuine concerns, that it makes them squeamish, that, you know, he should be, you know, given a chance to contextualize why he did this. Now, how would you respond to those people with those concerns? And I've had responses from Meryl Streep, from the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, from Frida Pinto, from the most extraordinarily... In fact, Meryl Streep and Frida Pinto are part of this campaign for this they film. They are. They are. We have a global launch in New York on the 9th of March. This is a global campaign. It's not about India. It's not about your tourism. It's not about pointing fingers. It was actually intended to be about elevating you. And in every piece of publicity I have done 
on this film, I have said, the first thing I've said is, I came because of admiration for India. I came because India was leading the world by example, was fighting for me. Please don't, don't uh, break that. It's a very precious thing. Don't now make people point fingers at you and say, what on earth are you doing banning a film that will change attitudes and help women the world over. Please reconsider. Just see the film, watch the film, and then discuss it. All right, Leslie, you won. Good luck in this uh, battle that you have to face as far as your film is concerned and for your global launch. Looks like a tough few days ahead. Thank you very much for joining us on the program tonight. Thank you. Thank you, too.